Hey everybody, um, it's Thursday, January 30th, uh, 2014. We're out in the garage tonight. I'm um, going to be doing a little work tonight on one of our Subaru SVXs. Um, SVX Mania is running wild here. The um, XVX count has grown from two, which I've shown on the previous video, to three. We've acquired another one. And number four will be coming to join us on Saturday. So, with that said, um, the newest acquisition is a 1996 Legacy. Um, it's a leather interior, black car. Um, fairly straight it has a little bit of body damage to the driver's door but other than that it's in a nice shape the interior in the car is immaculate um, it did not have an engine um, it suffers an engine failure um, and it just so happened that the engine failure was very soon after a transmission replacement the transmission was replaced at the Subaru dealer and, like I say, within a very short period of time after that, the uh, engine went away, for whatever reason. Um, we did get some engine parts with the car, but the short block, one cylinder head, and quite a number of components didn't come with it. So, But, it was purchased very inexpensively, and um, with the main thing being the prize of the transmission. Um, we're going to use the transmission in our 1992 Maroon SVX um, and take care of its issues. Um, what we will do is we'll put this transmission in the car, hook it up, and we're hopeful that um, this transmission will function fine. It, uh, very, it, like I say, it has very low miles on it and it is a factory rebuild. So I'm kind of excited about that what we will do with the transmission that we take out is we will open that up and we will go through it, rebuild it, and put it on the shelf. Because it's one thing about these transmissions, they are somewhat fragile, especially in the SVX vehicles. Um, the car that is coming on Saturday to join the family um, is a 1992 also. It is a black car, an LSI leather interior in very nice condition um, same owner for the last 15 or 16 years um, the car has been taken very good care of um, it does have a power steering well, it looks appears to be a power steering leak that we're going to have to address um, but other than that um, it seems like a pretty nice car it's in phenomenal shape so that like I said that will be coming on Saturday to join the family um, the other thing from our 96 SVX, which just donated its transmission to the 92 Maroon SVX, is, like I say, the interior in the car is flawless. Uh, the leather seats are in great shape. Um, I take that back. I won't, I won't go as far as to say flawless. There is a little issue with the back of the back seat on the top that we're going to have to have repaired. But other than that, I mean, it's really nice. So that in entire interior is going to be going into the maroon car as well. Um, the leather, the gray leather interior that is in the maroon car has seen better days. Um, so we're going to be taking that out and uh, putting the beige interior out of the 96 in it. One of the things that will be kind of a change for that is the 92 model has passive restraint system, which in other words is the motorized retracting lap belt. And you have to hook these, um, or I'm sorry, the shoulder belt. And you have to hook the lap belt separately. Uh, one thing with the 96 is it has a more conventional seat belt system. And we will be converting that over as well because um, the preference is not to have um, you know the auto retractors if we can get away with it so that's what's on the agenda but the agenda tonight <clears throat> is we're going to start removing the 
current transmission from this 92, which is in the garage behind me. Um, the garage is sharing space right now with this 92 SVX, and the 2006 Mustang GT is residing in here. Um, we did have some weather earlier today. It actually rained here for the first time in over a month, month and a half. But um, it's clear tonight, so the car, the Mustang is out in the driveway. We'll be bringing it back in when we're done in anticipation of actually some more snow tonight overnight, but then it's supposed to be clear for the next week or so. So without any ado, let's take a look at what we've got. Um, first up, this is the transmission out of the 96. We've already taken that out. Um, not really too bad a job, seeing the car had no engine. Um, the majority of the work was already done. So we just had to actually unhook a few things and um, take a few components off underneath the car and take it out. And this transmission is a Subaru 4EAT, four-speed electric automatic. Um, Subaru 4EATs from 1990 to, I believe, mid to late 98 or early 99 are essentially all the same. You can take a transmission out of a, and that is for Legacies, um, Imprezas, and Foresters. The only difference being the 4EAT, this is your transmission, automatic transmission section here, starting with you know pump housing and going to the back. This is all-wheel drive, so it does have a transfer clutch in the back of the transmission, which provides the rear drive for the car. This front section right here, here forward, houses your differential. And the only difference in 4EATs through most of the 90s is the final drive ratio of the diff. And of course, with all-wheel drive, the front differential and the rear differential in the back of the car need to match. The one thing that is different with the 4EAT in an SVX, and it's different than all the other Subaru models, the 4EAT is a 354 final drive. So it's geared higher than the other models. Um, I'm gonna, I want to say that in all the other models you have uh, 370s, 390s, there's a 4, I think a 411 and a 444. And there may be some others in there, I, I could be wrong on that. But the 354 is unique to the SVX only. It is not found in the other, in the other models. But one thing that can be done, well, there's two things that can be done. Um, you can swap out this transmission for, like I say, another 4EAT. But if you do not swap the differential section here to match the 354 in the back of the SVX, you have to change the rear differential as well to match whatever it is that you're putting in for a final drive transmission in the front. One of the popular um, automatic swaps for the SVX is to go to a later model 4EAT with a 444 um, final drive ratio. I believe the 444 and like I say, I could be a little off on this, but correct me if I'm wrong in comments, is found in the Legacy Outbacks in like 96, 97, 98, I think somewhere in there behind the 2.5 liter engine. The 92 Subaru that is coming on Saturday already has a 444 transmission and differential swap in it. Um, the differential in the rear of an SVX is LSD, which is limited slip, and it is an R180 um, differential housing. All the other Subarus are R160s, 
I think the R180 is found in the SVX as well as the later model Impreza STIs. So there's a little bit of modification to put different gears in an R180 housing. Um, we probably will get into that at some point, but right now we got a 354 going into a 354, so we don't have to change any of that. Should be just a basic. I'm hoping, hopefully, this transmission works okay. The other thing with this whole saga is this particular parts car has been sitting under a tarp for the last 10 years. So we're going to see what we end up with. Hopefully we're not going to have oil leaks, stuff like that. Um, but I think we're just going to give it a shot. We're going to go for broke and see what happens. If we have issues down after, we're just going to have to uh, take care of stuff as we find it. So this is your six-cylinder boxer 3.3 liter four cams um, Subaru flat six um, the 3.3 was only found in the SVX um, and it's uh, 230 horsepower which was some of the issues um, transmission failures in these cars are very common there's a number of different factors for that one of them being the actual the horsepower output of the car the second being um, cooling issues the transmissions fail from overheat but one of the contributing factors to the heat of the transmission failures is um, the fact that the control unit at cruise in in overdrive for whatever reason bleeds off 45 to 55 or 58 percent of the pressure to the high clutch which ultimately lets the clutch slip an excessively amount um, which creates heat and contributes to the failure as well so that's one of the things with the 444 it is a lower gear ratio um, the car doesn't lug as much than it does with the higher ratio um, but we'll see the transmissions were improved over the years um, different things were changed in them that helped to reduce all these issues so we're like I guess say we're hopeful that uh, we'll put this in and this car will become a nice driver for my favorite Subaru enthusiast so Okay, we'll uh, get going, we'll take some parts off, and uh, we'll bring you back and show you what we have. Okay, so we've taken, we've taken our air box and air plenum out. Um, this piece right here, um, a couple of emission hoses underneath gotten that off out of the way I have to take our our throttle cable and our um, cruise control cable off of here to give us some room for that um, we're going to have to remove this this is called a, a pitching stopper it goes back to the firewall down to here it controls you know movement this way in the engine assembly. We're going to take that off. Um, but now that we've got those hoses out of the way, there's uh, two upper. I'll move, our, move our light. You guys can have a, a halfway decent chance of seeing that. There's uh, one upper bell housing bolt right here. And there's another one. Another one here that actually we have to remove the starter as well. There's here, there's a bolt here and there's another bolt over around on the other side. Those have to come out. Um, these two connectors here are a multi, um, hopefully the camera's picking this up. I don't know if it's focused. They're multi connectors, they have to come out. There's one ground right here. 
that somebody has already broken because they put a connector in it. That's got to be connect, disconnected. Um, speed sensor, right here. right here, that has to be disconnected. Um, and while we're up here, um, we also have to unhook the um, left and right front oxygen sensors. There's one of these on either side. So once we get those unhooked, um, we're pretty much good to uh, raise the car up and get at everything underneath the car. And when the, of course, you know, the transmission will drop down out of the bottom of the car naturally. So the one thing that is a challenge is torque converter bolts. There's four torque converter bolts and this is focusing in there's a hole right here and those bolts come up right here and they're um they're a flathead bolt you have to turn the crankshaft around and access the four of them and they're kind of a pain you have to have the right little combination of wrench to get in there um i'm going to get some of this other stuff off out of the way when i get to that point i'll come back so uh you guys can see how how to get those out the way I do it anyways, um, it works, So, but it's it's kind of a tedious thing, so we'll just take one out and you guys will get the idea. So until then, uh, we'll be back. Okay, I um, have to admit I cheated a little bit. I couldn't find a good way to get the camera in there to see. I've got three of the four converter bolts out and I just loosened this one. I'll show you kind of what I use for a tool combination. I just, I apologize, but I just could not do that and run the camera at the same time. So, kind of, there it is. You got to roll, roll the crankshaft around. I got a bar on the crank, turning it around, just, you know, like anything else. These little bolts. Oh, that one just hit the floor. But anyways, I'll show you one of the other ones. These, these little bolts are an extremely small head. You have to be very careful. They strip very, very easily. I was actually fortunate on this one. They weren't very tight. Like I said, in my setup, I just, you know, got a socket on the crankshaft and rolled it around. And what I did is I went in with this six point and breaker bore and snapped them loose and then after that if I needed be I could just get I've got this long um, 12 millimeter wrench with it it has just about the right angle on it was able to get them the rest of the way so they actually went easier than expected which is good but we're kind of at that point where I think I've about got everything up top here that I'm going to get and it's about time to jack the car up and go underneath which will be another night I've had about enough fun with this for one evening so there you go that's the beginnings of our transmission swap um, just going to slow and deliver it. The, the hardest part of this is getting the all the, the hoses and stuff off of the air intake. There's a, a lot of them. Um, there's like PCV hoses and vent hoses and over time, I mean, this car is, uh, well, let's see, 92. So 20, 22 years old, right? 14. 22, 2002, 2012, yeah, 22 years old. So with that in mind, a lot of these hoses and stuff have gotten pretty brittle over time. And a lot of them are on plastic connectors. So you just have to be very, very careful, very slow, very deliberate taking them apart because a lot of the stuff, you know, that we're dealing with here on this particular vehicle is long obsolete and you can't, you can't just go out and replace it. So you have to be very careful, very deliberate, and um, get
get it done that way. So that's about it for tonight. Um, we'll uh, upload this video, give you guys something to look at. The video's been a little thin. And uh, I don't know, either tomorrow night or this weekend, we'll get uh, back at it and see if we can get the transmission out of this thing. So until then, thanks for watching, thanks for ratings, thanks for subscribing. Take it easy.